Indonesia's national credo is unity and diversity. But what's happening here, in the jungles of Aceh, threatens to break the nation apart. Outgunned and outmanned, these guerrillas of the Free Aceh movement have fought for 23 years. Now Jakarta's determined to defeat them once and for all. Ask how big the enemy reinforcements are. Do we have informers among the soldiers? There are three. Their names are X, Y and Z. Pass the word to Kamal Bati that we will strike together. This guerrilla commander knows that his struggle could undermine the whole nation. Indonesia will disappear because in every colonial situation, once they let go of one region, they have to let other regions go too. The Achenese separatists plan their tactics in the full knowledge that dialogue with the government is not even an option. Both sides are determined to fight on. Indonesian army reinforcements have just taken up positions on a nearby hilltop. If they're really ignorant and hard-headed, we may have to take out one of their sub-district military commanders. Their case for independence rests on Aceh's centuries-long history as an Islamic sultanate and their bloody resistance to Dutch colonial rule. They're a proud people who see themselves as distinct. They deeply resent what they call Javanese occupation. Today, though, 150,000 Achenese have had to flee their homes because of the fighting and are living as refugees in their own land. These camps are hotbeds of Achenese nationalism. The Free Aceh flag is defiantly displayed. The camps have grown up around mosques where refugee children are taught Islamic values and a sense of their rich Achenese heritage. Theirs is a rich natural heritage too, with extensive tracts of forest, untapped tourist potential and a strategic location at the head of the Straits of Malacca. But most Achenese live in poverty, many in the shadow of the huge natural gas and oil plants, the region's greatest asset. One gas field alone earns the government $7 million every day. The problem seen uh, 54 years of in Indonesian exploitation, 99% of that um, richness has gone to Jakarta, and only 1%, even less than 1%, uh, live in Aceh. The central government has done something worse than colonialists uh, done in the past. The only solution for Aceh right now is uh, to have a free uh, sovereign state back. In the village of Simpang Jaya, we saw how the struggle for that sovereign state can cost lives. Those are the feet of my son. They're the feet of my son. Grandma's son, Kairul, was one of a number of villagers cutting timber in a remote logging camp high in the mountains. It was a dangerous area. Kairul and three of his friends died in the latest alleged massacre by Indonesian forces. Seven are still unaccounted for. Kairul was Ranma's eldest son, the family's breadwinner. The security forces warned the villagers here to keep quiet about the incident, and they're frightened. We were the only outsiders to witness its aftermath. <laughs> But the search party found some survivors. Some were too badly wounded to talk, but another was keen to tell us his story. Those who shot us were soldiers. Why they shot at us, I don't know. My friend lay dead. I was lying on the ground as if mortally wounded. I made groaning noises. Then silence, no more gunshots. In Aceh, it's the police force that's in charge of counterinsurgency. So he went to their regional headquarters to find out their version of what happened to Kairul and his friends. 
We had an appointment to see the police chief, but were fobbed off with a captain. We asked him about the alleged human rights abuses and to explain police tactics. Another question. So we asked him a general question about how the police work in this region. Our target is to relate to the people living in the villages by giving guidance and assistance and to maintain a safe community in villages and sub-districts in North Aceh. The patrol from the elite mobile police brigade which we followed was reacting to a tip-off. Most of these men aren't even from here. They're fighting an invisible enemy in hostile territory and seem terrified, and justifiably so. Many police have been killed this year. The stakes are very high and, a senior Indonesian military commander told us, if the security forces fail to defeat the Free Aceh movement, the repercussions could be dire. Potentially, we could end up just like Yugoslavia. We too consist of a variety of races, and it's entirely possible that we could end up like them. We have to be very, very wary of disintegration or breakup. So we have to keep Indonesia united so that it doesn't end up like Yugoslavia. Over the past few months, the conflict here has intensified. The security forces are finding it harder and harder to keep the separatists at bay. Rarely a day goes by without more shootings and killings. On the Trans-Sumatran Highway, just outside Aceh's main industrial city, Lok Samawa, we came across a police roadblock. The police on the scene were in an agitated state. They said men on motorbikes had ambushed this vehicle, killing a local police chief and his assistant and leaving four others injured. We will fight with our weapons, with our knives, with our hands if we have to. We will fight until the very last drop of blood. Even if we have to die for freedom, we will die like martyrs. Ahmad Kandang is one of the core group of guerrilla hardliners trained in Libya during the 1980s. Held in awe by local villagers, he's at the top of the government's wanted list. It's the first time he's ever been interviewed. When we take control of our country, we will sweep out all Indonesian military and chase out all civil servants. As to people who've worked and collaborated with the government, we will chase all of them out as well, not just the Javanese and Indonesian troops. Amidst the worsening conflict, a small group of lawyers is investigating human rights abuses committed in Aceh. Mohamed Saleh works with the government-funded Legal Aid Foundation. It's dangerous work. These lawyers are constantly being threatened. It was a week before they'd risk going to the village of Simpang Jaya to investigate the deaths of Cairo Lumuri and the other loggers. Up until now, not one of these cases has been solved, and with all the human rights abuses that have been committed, a lot of people have died meaninglessly. Despite his fears and the Legal Aid Foundation's uphill struggle, Mohamed Saleh wants to find out whether Kairul's mother, Ranma, is prepared to press charges. Up in their home, a few kilometers beyond Simpang Jaya, villagers have gathered for the wake. It doesn't take long to emerge, during his interview with Ranma, that although she's very bitter, she does not want to press charges. She has lost all faith in the government. 
Hana lu, hana lu rencana anak lu. Bila pelanggaran HAM di Aceh terus terjadi dan banyak makan. If human rights abuses in Aceh continue, leading to more killings, then the families who've been bereaved will certainly be driven to support the Free Aceh movement. It's been very painful for the families who've suffered these abuses. We, the young generation of today, will heal our nation which has been martyred under the acts of imperialist colonialist Java. Our struggle for independence means we will no longer be part of a colonial state. So are we now ready to fight faithfully like martyrs for an Islamic Achenese nation? Barely trained female recruits are paraded in front of the villages by Commander Shafi. He makes capital of the way the Indonesian security forces are handling this conflict. This 18-year-old girl told us she joined the movement because her mother and brother had been beaten and tortured by the army. She said she feared for her own life. The separatists say they'll accept nothing less than full independence. The government has firmly stated that it will never let go of Aceh. Unlike East Timor, it just can't afford to, economically or politically. In another village, not far from Simpangjaya, in what's become known as Aceh's Triangle of Death, the results of another massacre. They're mourning six young men. The army says they were caught in crossfire during a shootout. The villagers think the army took revenge for the loss of their own men. The government in Jakarta now admits that freedom for Aceh could lead to the breakup of Indonesia. For the people of Aceh, it would be the culmination of a long and bloody struggle. But until then, there will be a lot more blood spilt, a lot more people mourned.